Right then, I didn't show the bit me scrambling up the side of the hill because it was quite, I had to put the camera away at one stage because I literally had to do a sort of spread eagle myself and come up otherwise it meant ploughing through lots of brambles so I climbed up to the tree with a swing in it and it was, fortunately it wasn't muddy I wouldn't have even attempted it if it had been muddy but I couldn't really take a I could have had the camera just swinging in the breeze, you know but this is a path I always use when I'm coming up from Sand Bay. If I'm coming up off the beach, I come up this way. It's a very tick, risky area, anything like this. Um, and already I feel invaded. One of those areas, I'm afraid. Um, But apparently if your clothes aren't dirty and you want to kill a tick off put them in a tumble dryer apparently that kills them if you've got one that is or stick them in the microwave something apparently will kill them for you if they're in your clothes backpack back in them but no one normally can be bothered you don't really want to do all that when you've had a walk I'm glad I come out today though what time did you leave? Half past 12. So I've been out for like, um, what was one of us two? Two and a half hours I've been out. It's a local walk, very local. And there's no pressure about getting a bus. The worst thing for me going over where I go is uh, big gaps between buses. It's like You're, you either try to make it for that sort of four o'clock time knowing you've got to wait two and a half hours even longer on a Saturday if you miss it so the only thing you can do and you can't miss the last one because there ain't no more so I can, I can think of times where I can use the full time and get that later bus it's true but anyway we don't want to talk about that now because there aren't no buses up here I mean there used to be <sighs> there used to be a bus that would take you in the wood you have to check yourself when you get home today right then now we're on a track we came along not long ago when we did the bluebell end of the wood and we passed along here where there's another cathedral of trees waiting because <coughs> the idea today is to go down near Grove Park and into town to the mountain shop to get some pest spray called Trek I think it's called Trek you spray it around your you spray it on, on your ankles and things like that around your neck um, I don't know, I can't remember now but it's... Uh, I've run out, I did use it a lot last year I... that was after I'd been attacked by about 15 odd ticks you know what, I still don't recognise where I am at the moment, don't you? Yeah. There's a path going up there I don't recognise. So, yeah. I don't know whether I have to go up there. What do you think? No. I'm mm, not sure. I might have come out on a completely different way. Intoxicating beauty, that's what I call this place. This cathedral of trees, intoxicating beauty, and not intoxicating in a poisonous way. Just saturation of beauty. That's the first one of the first cathedrals. And there's our old tree, old Noblehead. Isn't he lovely? He sees me here every year. 
Look at that though, I've got pictures of this, you know, this just is breathtaking. Powerhouses of oxygen. Photosynthesis. I can't stress it enough on a mirror. This, these life, these earthlings. So gorgeous. I was talking to a girl earlier. We were talking about how they, these earthlings are so connected. You know what I mean? Look at that. Look at that lovely, delicate leaf. Look. And it's, it's a factory, a powerhouse. <sighs> Making its food. Absorbing the light, using the light as the energy source. And converting the chemicals to starch to be stored in the leaves. C6. God, I used to remember the I used to remember, I think it's C, is it C6H, something rather, O. I'm just trying to remember the chemical formula for part of it. I used to know it. I recognise it as soon as I see it as well. I haven't done it for a long time. It will never move, it doesn't, well even our own metabolic pathways are absolutely amazing. When I did some science with the OU, Quite heavy stuff it was actually, because of the terminology that they use and all these long words. It's, it can get quite mind-boggling. But um, yeah, I, you get the gist of it though when they're talking about it, right? They're going on about photosynthesis or in the, our own bodies, the Krebs cycle and all that. And the mitochondria that we have within ourselves, they're miniature powerhouses. And uh, I just i just think everything's fascinating. I really enjoyed doing my OU stuff. I've still got all the books. But my desire to absorb too much is not there so much now. I think my brain is, uh, well I don't know how saturated it is, but... I try to keep up to date a bit, but I don't do any courses now because I, I only do courses where you can read the stuff, reflect and make a few comments. I don't want courses where you take the exams and you have to remember everything because I can't remember it. You know, I can't remember it. And, um, but I, I quite like some of the um, space courses. And I wouldn't mind doing some basic maths again. I really would. I did a lot of maths with the science degrees I did. And I understood the symbolism of it all. But there was still some basic maths that I never got exposed to in my school education. You know, we did fractions and then it all stopped. You had to request extra lessons if you wanted to do algebra or anything like that. I felt quite deprived. Of course, then you go to college and you've got to do all these equations and everything, which I understood. When it could be functionally applied, I can understand it. Uh, yeah, I can understand it. And I enjoyed it. But there were still some fundamentals. I mean, I haven't done fractions for years, and I don't know if I could do them now. But I was very good at them. I remember that. I got 80% in one exam, which might sound not a lot to some people. But um, with me, it was always carelessness if I got it wrong. Or rushing, something like that. But there's still some, some stuff I'd like someone to... George has done some stuff to teach me. But I'm not quite sure if my mind can do it. And it's not because you're thick or anything. I still think some minds deal with numbers differently. And, of course, in my day at school, if you didn't get your times table right, you got hit over the right knuckles with a flipping ruler when you had to stand up and do it. And no one knew when it was their turn. 
and you were, and you were made to feel stupid if you'd got them wrong. You know, and nobody wanted to be picked on to have to do it. So we learnt our bloody tables. I tell you, it did help us learn them. But then, if you couldn't get something, it's like I said to other people in the past, when I was nine, I couldn't get over the concept of a decimal point. I couldn't understand why you had to have a dot. And to me, it was a dot. No one pointed out to me how simple that dot, what it meant. That it was separating tenths, hundredths, thousands. They just said, look, Sheila, this is just a, a number that you separate things. Instead of comma, we're using a dot. Now, if someone had pointed that out to me when I was nine, I might have felt better about it. I can remember having a very patient teacher called Mr. Hubbard. He tried so hard to get me it through to me. And of course, you, as a child, you feel a failure, you feel thick. But it was the concept of it. I always used to think out the box. They used to say, Sheila, you think too much. Um, I got told that. Then I was told, oh, it's got to be black and white with Sheila. You know, a spade is a spade and all that. But I actually was thinking out the box, actually. But my love of Shakespeare comes from school. We had a choice. You could do O-level maths or English literature. Guess what I chose? English literature. In those days, you weren't forced to do things. So, and I had to do it in six months. I'll tell you why, because our English, the first English teacher I had, took us down the wrong syllabus. We were doing all the wrong stuff. So another teacher stepped in and gave us intense six months English literature, which was supposed to have been over two years. And we had to do it after school. And how she got us to do it was by us acting out the roles, like in Shakespeare. Henry the Fourth, Part One. We took on the roles. Charles Dickens was another one that we had to do. I think it was Great Expectations. Um, I didn't get a brilliant grade, but I did pass it. I just think, and and it. And my love of Shakespeare after that, do you think you've passed the way up? Yeah, probably. My love of Shakespeare after that just grew and grew and grew. And I still love it and I don't always understand it either. All this funny Shakespeare stuff. And a couple years ago when I had my van, I wanted to go to Shakespeare land. So I camped there for three or four days on the River Avon. Used to get the boat up the river into town. And then I'd go, go to the Royal Shakespeare place, playhouse. I made my way out to where Shakespeare lived and where the farm and all that. And I tell you, it was a brilliant experience for me because I had my van. And there was so much more I wanted to do. I haven't had a vehicle now for five years. My walking compensates to a certain extent, but of course it's over and over again, same walks. It's hard. I'm just wondering if I've missed my way up with me talking. I did not even know I got on this subject. I don't know. Just reflecting, talking and reflecting. Well, on my walk I've had a banana, a bounty, a bottle of juice, one and a half bottles of water. Still got a fruit juice left and half a bottle of water and an orange. And I've used Kodak the whole time. And I keep thinking I've missed my turning. Yeah, yeah. I was talking too much. Feels further on than I thought. But it might just be through there.
No, I don't think we're there yet. Yeah, this is a, a very good compensator though, because I've got to know the woods and the hills really well. But of course, when I had the van, I could still explore the churches and the villages that you can't get to easily, and there's no bus. Now I've got to apply for my driving license again, around about October time. And I think, if I manage to get it, is it up there, Shell? I've got a feeling it is, isn't it? Is it up there you go? I'm not sure. Looks very, very leafy, doesn't it? I think it's a bit further up. I think I'm just going to risk it and either hire or get an old banger. Now I have seen an old banger over uh, Winscombe for about 1,200, which is within my range. I could possibly afford that. I only really want it for a short period of time. There we got there. So Winscombe Cars, I think it's called. I might give them a ring. Because if you're going to go, you really need to go soon. You only get three months of the year where you might get this sort of weather. Right, you to turn well, off. Look at this tree, everyone. When I was here just uh, over a week ago, it wasn't like this. It was still looking quite wintry. This tree is so different in the summer. Spring, I mean. Look at that, lush and green. I'm going to have a sit over here on the bench a minute. Yeah, look at it. Such a gorgeous big tree, this one at the junction point. So this path here has what I started to come up at the very beginning but branched off to do the coastal road at the bottom but if I hurry down there I'd end up where I started down there. I came up up there from the lower path and if you go that way a spine of one of the spines of the hill fort the main one's up here. I'm just going to turn off it's just a small photo of this gorgeous tree it's just so beautiful and you wouldn't, the last time I was here, I nearly didn't bother taking a photo of it. It looked sad still, but look at it now. Magnificent. <laughs>